Hey guys. Hey. The cost of living crisis is currently the biggest topic of conversation in the UK and globally, and one that is affecting the vast majority of people. Costs continue to rise a lot faster than wages. Each day we're told about yet another increase to food, energy or childcare, causing people to feel pushed to their limits when it comes to their finances. Given the direction of travel is that we're likely to see more price increases at least over the next few months. We thought we'd make this video today to explore certain mindset shifts or resets that we all need to try to adopt or consider as we go through this period of the cost of living crisis. Now it's worth mentioning that the things we're going to be sharing on today's video is in no way, shape or form judgmental. We know that many people have a lot of challenging situations right now, a lot of it being completely outside of their control. So please take from this video what you can. Uh, our intention is for this video to be uh, offer you some positivity, to offer you some hope and some determination for the future. If that sounds good to you guys, we'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already and share this video with people. All right, let's jump straight in. And the very first mindset shift we wanted to share today is for us all to take a look at the history of inflation, okay? So I'm gonna put up on the screen a chart of what inflation has looked like in the UK over the last 40 years, okay? It's worth going to take a look at, particularly as we all go through these very challenging times from a cost of living perspective. And the reason we went to look at this is we wanted to just kind of first of all understand for ourselves mm -hmm. what life has looked like because we're not 40 yet, and, but in those 40 years, a lot has happened. And the reason 40 years matters is that, you know, the inflation rate we're seeing right now is the highest it's been for the last 40 years. So going back all the way to 1982. And up on that chart, you can see um, that there are different things happening. So we've got obviously the global financial crisis that happened in 2008. You can obviously see inflation you know, rising in that period. You've got the Brexit vote, you've got COVID-19, you've got many other things that came before that. But whilst Mary and I were looking at this chart, the one positive thing that really came out of it for us was that it's clear that although we might be going through quite challenging times at the minute with cost of living, it's clear looking at history that inflation doesn't remain like that. You know, we expect that inflation will come down as we've seen it in the past. And the trend is that it does come down over time. And it's, as you can see in that chart, going all the way back to the 1980s, when it was another time when it was very, very tough from a cost perspective, inflation did come down, although it went back up over various periods of time. But we can take some, I guess, some peace yeah. from the fact that we expect things to change. Absolutely. So the point we wanted to make here really with looking at this history is that we want to remind ourselves that we are a lot more resilient than we may actually think, right? We've been through some really darker times in the past, you know, the mm -hmm. global financial crisis and all those things yeah. I mentioned before. So if you're watching this right now, I hope that gives you some kind of comfort to know that although we're going through a lot financially at the moment, things will change and things will change for the better. Next would say to be intentional because it's a numbers game. Now, we know that in addition to the cost of living crisis, we're also entering a period of recession. However, we can be intentional about our attitude during these times. Okay, so for example, work. Now, during 2008 in the global financial crisis, I got made redundant along mm -hmm. with thousands other people. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the best advice I was given during that time was to see it as a numbers game when it came to applying for new positions. And so I literally did just that. I was throwing out as many applications for jobs as possible until I got the desired result, which was to get a new job. And as a result, I was able to get a new job two months after being made redundant mm. and with a better job and a 10K increase. And so... Yeah. You know, that just talks to the fact that if I hadn't been given that advice, I definitely would have wallowed in self-pity, you know, mm -hmm. had a pity party mm -hmm. and, you know, really would have taken on the rejection mm -hmm. and let that affect me when it came to applying for a job. And I probably wouldn't have got a job as quick had I not seen it as just a numbers game. Just apply it until you get your desired results. I also got made redundant uh, mm -hmm. a year after you in 2009. Mm -hmm. And I got a job after three months of applying again, similar to you, got a better job, 
I this time got like a 9k pay rise. So it does so, work if you really put your mind to it. Absolutely. Next example of the numbers game is home budget. Here we're talking about knowing your numbers. Yeah. So here we'd suggest that you should really look at leaving as much room for you to breathe. Obviously, mm. as challenging as that is during these times, it would definitely help if you make room to breathe. Make sure that you assume the worst case scenario, e.g. a 13% inflation rate, and gradually prepare yourself, your mind, and your home for that kind of situation. And the reference to 13% comes from the fact that, apparently, according to research, we are actually going through a much higher inflation rate than the official figures might suggest. Okay, Absolutely. so apparently it's actually much closer to 13% mm -hmm. than it is closer to about 9 or 10% as the official figures so far have shown us. All right, next mindset shift is to look out for everyday opportunities, okay? Now, apart from the doom and gloom, there's a lot of that going on at the moment. One thing we could do is actually focus more of our attention on looking out for everyday opportunities in our lives. We've got some examples. For example, one, you can get a better paying job, right? Yes. We know that. We know that. So though the forecast for the future, the near future is that unemployment will be higher, we still know it's possible to get a better quality or better paying job. That's one great opportunity. Another way is that this period could actually change the way we eat. Mm -hmm. Okay? So although prices are going up and we're all struggling and trying to figure, navigate life in this, in this period, one thing we know for sure is that a lot of us spend quite a lot of money on takeaways yeah. up until this period. So another way to, of looking at what's going on is that this could actually change where we eat. We could actually spend far more time making more home-cooked meals, mm -hmm. you know, reducing waste at home, at, rather than spending that money on takeaways, for example. Next point is that we could actually become fitter. Because this is one thing that's within our control. So though a lot of things are outside a lot of our controls at the moment, mm -hmm. we could become fitter, you could do more workouts at home, around your home or in local parks, all again tied to feeling better in these times. And then finally, speaking of opportunities, we know obviously that during recessions, apart from the difficulties that many people face, there are also opportunities for the people who maybe have been diligent with their finances or who just happen to be looking for opportunities during those times. Those could include actually buying properties a lot cheaper, owning assets a lot cheaper, and so on. We've made a very specific video speaking to how to profit from the event of a recession. We're gonna to link to that video below and above you to head over and check it out in your own time. Number four, adjusting to a simpler lifestyle will pay off in the long term. Over the last decade, we've become accustomed to spending so much more money. Mm -hmm. You have the consumerist culture, and my son did an assembly, um, his class on sustainability and e-waste, and he spoke about upgrade culture, yeah. where people have the desire to buy the next shiny item, mm -hmm. the latest um, iPhone upgrade, or whatever it is. And there is always a quest for more yeah. and the next new thing. At a cost, obviously at a cost to your pockets and to the environment. So one thing that the cost of living crisis does is that it creates a reset for people mm -hmm. to really think about their relationship with money. It will help us to adjust to a simpler lifestyle. And this is a good thing. All of this will help towards building our wealth in the future. All right, so our next mindset shift is for us to embrace more portfolio work, okay? So research shows that pre-pandemics around 2018 to 2019, around 25% of UK adults had a side hustle. So that's around one in every four UK adults. Post-pandemic research again shows that that number is now more like 46%. That's almost one in every two people have a side hustle. Now, this is, has obviously been accelerated by, by COVID, mm -hmm. but what this really tells us is that the future will be a lot more about portfolio work. We're all gonna want more flexibility. We're all gonna want more income streams from different sources. So what this tells us right now is that although we're going through a challenging time with the cost of living crisis, it also presents a really good opportunity for us to think about our different sources of income. Spend some time now really just embracing alternative ways that we could actually generate another income stream. In fact, the trends carry on and show from research that the year 2031 will really be about portfolio works. And so the future of work will be more of us doing different kinds of work and earning different forms of money using either our existing skills 
or new skills that we acquire. Now, if you're thinking about all of this and you're thinking, well, I have some skills at the moment, but I don't know how to go about using them to earn some income, or you're thinking, well, actually, I'd love to acquire different skills that I could use to earn some extra money, Mary and I have created a one-year program that we deliver via email once a week on a Friday to help people achieve two things, to take control of their finances and to help them grow their money. It's a very practical program and it's for free. We'll link to it below if you're, if you're interested in joining and we'll also link it above for you to head over and join and literally wait every Friday for the next one year. The goal is to help you have a radically different financial life in that period. Point number six is to shift your focus from scarcity to abundance. So here we're talking about there's not just one piece of the pie to fight over. No, instead we have an abundance of pies and enough to feed us all. Yeah, I guess another way of looking at this is that we should really aim to removing our focus from the limiting beliefs that might be holding us back, but instead focusing our attention on becoming producers as well as leveraging opportunities that might exist out there at the moment, even during this time of the cost of living crisis. Some of those opportunities I mentioned a lot, I mentioned earlier, and I'm quite sure some of you will be able to share some of those opportunities if you jumped in the comments and maybe give us some of your insights as well. Every single one of us can create more value. Mm -hmm. We can help solve problems. We can earn more money today using our existing skills. You can upskill by learning new skills and you have a wealth of free information online for you to start that journey. All of this way of thinking is actually born out of having an abundance mindset rather than having a scarcity mindset. Guys, overall, we hope this video has done one thing, which is to give you a lot more hope for the future, as well as to give you a lot more determination for the future. We're all capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for. But the key is to work on these various mindset shifts that Mary and I have shared today, and to try to surround yourself with the kinds of people who also help you to reinforce these mindset shifts. If you enjoyed this video, guys, would really appreciate you sharing it with someone who could do with some additional encouragement during these times. And don't forget to like this video if you haven't done so already. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be, be thankful, thankful and, and seek joy. joy. Take care, you, people. Stay encouraged. Bye. Bye.